we can ask the people that we, have a, that we claim we have a problem with and say that they're racist. Because the idea in our community is that white people are racist, they don't want the best for us, yet we're asking them to fix our problems. We're asking them to educate our kids. With fear sweeps, not a man here who can censor me. I'm on the pier, Elohim with the energy. Uh, black boy, tell me how you really feel. I just want to build with you. Black what is the issue? We don't have schools of our own for our young men and women coming up. We, we can't control education. We have no control over education. We have HBCUs and the majority of us don't even attend them, right? They struggle for, for funding. Why do they struggle for funding, right? And so again, we, we have to start reinvesting in self. Um, and what, what can you expect? We think like um, the biggest problem I see is that we, we can't educate our own people. And even if we had the ability to educate our own people, we don't, what are we gonna educate them on? Because again, what is gonna be the culture? How, that's the only way to do it. And, and the way I've thought about it was, you have to start with the seed and the seed are the children, right? Um, the ones that are too old now might be too far gone, right? How do, you, how do you reverse engineer that? It's too difficult. So I would put and invest a lot of my energy into the children because that's the best way to do it. But there has to be a structure, there has to be a plan. There has to be an understanding as to what, what are we gonna actually teach them? So my thing is, we don't have a way to actually, we don't have avenues to actually teach and educate our own. And now that, what does the curriculum look like? How do we, again, how do we teach culture? How do we redefine culture? How do we redefine black image? How do we, how do we teach our young men to deal with our young women and vice versa? Um, and again, that's where it starts. Everything comes down to education. And again, who's gonna be in charge of putting the curriculum together? Who's gonna agree on this curriculum? Because culture, at the end of the day, is just a system of values, a system of morals and values, understandings and beliefs that everybody as a collective within the group and are in agreement. And you know that's the most important thing because without having structure, you can't, you don't have nothing. And again, once I always say this, you know, a, a tree with no roots can't stand. And so right now we have to focus on the root in order to actually grow a tree. So, so I'm, I'm gonna push back just a little bit mm -hmm. for the sake of conversation because I'm, I'm with you 95% of the time. All way. right. Here's where I disagree. Okay. A lot of what I preach, even when we're having a dialogue around black men and black women, mm -hmm. or the dialogue, uh, dialogue around Africa, um, FBAs, the whole nine, <clears throat> I think the, the, the core of that conversation that we often gloss over is that the entire Western world and the Eastern world as well has a vested financial interest mm -hmm. in our dysfunction. Correct. So one of the points that you brought up, um, I'm completely behind it. Education, culture, the whole nine. How do we navigate that in a white supremacist mm. Western context? Because... The Megan Goods, the, the, the Cardi B's, the, the, the Big Meeches, and, and the whole nine. Well, you could make the argument that black people glamorize those people, right. you know, inherently or innately or whatever. You could also make the argument, this is the argument I tend to make, that those images are force fed to us to perpetuate a certain agenda. Mm -hmm by the power structure. Because like I said in the beginning, there is a vested interest in our dysfunction. So the, the, in an apparatus that understands the vested interest in our dysfunction, there is no incentive for them to show us black doctors mm -hmm. or black lawyers. There's more of an incentive for them to help us celebrate our outlaws. Correct. Because it leads to our dysfunction. So how do we navigate that within that context in a way that's strategic because they're gonna bust it up if we, you know what I'm saying, too, rah, rah. So how do we do that? It's, it's easy. So um, I don't believe in white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Oh, we gonna talk? Let's talk about <laughs> it. Let's go, let's I go. I don't believe in white supremacy um, because white supremacy with the, its core meaning is it's a belief, right? And if you, if you believe it, then it's real. The, the, the problem is 
perception is reality, mm. right? And again, white supremacy, the, the notion of it within itself is, is ridiculous. Mm. White supremacy. If you, say, if, you say it, if you say it too, if you keep saying it, it doesn't make any sense, right? White supremacy. The reality is white people are 60% of the population, right? Are they supreme? No, I think that, you know, words, are, words have power, right? And we have to be mindful of the words that we speak over ourselves, over our community, right? We walk around and say, white supremacy, white supremacy. What does it really mean? Now, I like to say, I think, I think we have to start dismantling some of these words because, again, words have power, and I understand the meaning of words. I like to consider myself a little bit of a wordsmith, right? And so when you say white supreme, you're saying white people are supreme over you. They're not. They can believe that. I don't care what they believe, right? No white man is supreme over me. That's the reality, right? That's my perception. My perception is reality. So we have to start training and re-educating our people to stop thinking that someone's skin color makes them supreme. Why? Right? When they require, they need us. They need us. God forbid if all the black people decide to leave this country, right? They would be paying us to stay. Right. We're required. We're needed here. Right. We're the blood. We're the lifeline of this country in so many ways. So, no, I don't believe in white supremacy. If you're a white person, you believe that you're supreme because of your skin color. That's a, that's your personal prerogative. Why does that bother me? It has nothing to do with anything. So 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 white supremacy is a belief system. All right. That's fine. What do I say then? Because people are going to say, well, there's something there. Right. There's something there. If you say white supremacy, I'll, I'll explain my definition. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. So what do I say? I say instead of white supremacy, say white leverage. They have leverage because they're 60 percent. It doesn't make them supreme. Their hands are in a little bit of everything, but their hands are there because we, our hands are, are missing. Right. We're not where we need to be. Again, we are focused on entertainment. We're focused on sports. We're focused on music. They're focused on wealth building. They're focused on nation building. They're focused on on professions that that, that matter. Right. And so we're not investing our people in positions of leadership. That's our personal problem as a community that people would say, well, well, they're not letting us in. They're not like, well, guess what? Of course not. Right. We got to fight for it or you build your own. That's the reality. So. So, you know, same thing with with. Um, white privilege. I say white preference. I don't think white people are privileged. If you own your own, you decide who you want to be in or be out, right? It's not right. It doesn't make it fair. But white privilege, white preference, whatever we want to call it, white supremacy or white leverage, we can call it whatever you want. The idea is those things fall at the feet of black unity. Do you see what I'm saying? It doesn't exist. Black unity is the kryptonite to whatever you think white people have or any other, any other ethnic group. It doesn't matter. The problem is those things will be irrelevant if we were together as a community, if we practice group economics. White supremacy means nothing. So the reality is, is it really supreme? Are we really oppressed? We're oppressed because we're not together. So, of course, it's easy to oppress a large group of people when we act as individuals. Right. So, again, I think we've forgotten where we are. We're in a capitalist country. Capitalism rules. The color that matters is green. It's not black. It's not white because the white people are supreme. The poor people, there wouldn't, be, there wouldn't be any poor white people. Right. So, again, I think it's easy to create that narrative, to create that illusion. Why? Because it keeps us divided. You know, and you said it earlier, the whole purpose is to divide people in order to conquer them. And the issue is the white people aren't the problem. It's the elites. Of course, you got racist white people. Of course, what are you going to do about that? Right. You can't control the hearts of people. The government can't legislate love. They can't make you love one another. So if you don't like me because of the color of my skin, you're an idiot. Why do I care? Right. If you call me a nigger, what, what am I supposed to do? Get mad? I laugh at you and I walk away. It's just like someone saying I'm unattractive. Oh, so you're ugly. Oh, OK. Right. It doesn't mean anything. So, again, the power of words and the power that a person has over you is the power that you gave them. And so if we keep giving this power away, then it's on us, right? We have to change what these things mean in our community. It's okay if you believe you're, you're, you're a white supremacist. What am I going to do about that? What, am I going to go fight you? So, so I, I, 
Let me hear it. We're, 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 we're on opposite sides of that spectrum. Go ahead. I don't think white supremacy is a feeling. Mm -hmm. I think it is a, it's an apparatus. And it's an apparatus tasked to do one thing, to keep a certain group somewhere and to keep another group somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So, and I think you mentioned a really good point. You said white people are the majority Correct. in the United States. Globally, they're the minority. Yes. But when we look at Great Britain, for instance, they have more colonies all over the world than anywhere else, uh, than anybody else. And the reason that is, is because they have initiated a system. And this, this goes back to the economics versus culture conversation. Right. They've initiated a system that leverages an idea that they are supreme. Right? Yes. And with that being said, I think for us to dialogue around that without acknowledging that system and the fallout of some of the instruments that that system set into place, I think we're not having a full, robust conversation. So, for instance, if we're going to have the conversation about black male crime mm -hmm. without putting it in context of vagrancy laws mm -hmm. after uh, the 13th Amendment, Mm -hmm. or um, the convict lease system, mm -hmm. or you know, mass incarceration as a whole, crack epidemic, the yes. whole nine, we're not having a full robust conversation because it's not in context. Now, the reason why I say the context is so important is because whenever black people have done exactly what you're saying, that system, mm -hmm that wants to maintain a certain hierarchy, correct, makes a concerted effort to dismantle that. So we're talking about COINTELPRO. Mm -hmm. We're talking about every single black Wall Street that was burned to the ground. There was a lot of them. So for us to have the conversation out of context of, this is why those things, this is the main reason why those things don't work, especially in the context of, we, 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 I don't know if you remember Killer Mike's show um, where he... Uh, Come on, trigger. The trigger trigger one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he was like, um, I'm going to go a week without uh, using anything that's not black on. Right. And how difficult that was for him to do. Right. So in a Western context, like I'm very critical of, of desegregation. I think that was the worst thing for black people. In a Western context, it's easier said than done to just focus on culture. Mm -hmm. Because we're ignoring the reason why it doesn't work when we do. Right. So how do we have that conversation and make those changes in a way that's more strategic, understanding that the entire world is invested in our dysfunction. It's bigger than just the feeling. It, well, if you look at what is the definition of white supremacy, right? This, is, this whole thing is a social construct that we bought into, right? We allowed someone to tell us that our skin makes us inferior. The color of our skin makes us inferior. Right. If you believe that, then you become that. It's just that simple. I disagree because I think it's it's similar to slavery was a choice when Kanye said it, because in a certain context, that's true. But in the context of so, for instance, right, mm -hmm. if we're if I lived in the United States in 1960 and 1950, it doesn't matter if I thought I was the shit. It doesn't matter if I, I walked with pride or whatever the case may be. If I whistle at a white woman, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are real life consequences. That was then, right? So, so again, I think, I think I'm not saying that white supremacy within itself, where they were supreme, right? Um, or systemic racism wasn't a thing. I'm not saying that it never existed. I'm saying now, today. When did it disappear? I would say... I would say after, I wouldn't say necessarily that it disappeared. I would say that the thing again is there was a point in time where blacks had no, they had no opportunities. There was an active force oppressing black people. There was no way to educate ourselves. There was no freedom, right? Again, we know this. We're talking about after that, we're talking about in the sixties, was that a thing? What, what is happening? I think you mentioned it and I think you made a good point. There's an active, an active force, an active threat that does not want to see us grow, that does not want to see us come together, does not want to see us excel. This is true. Well, why is that, right? We're worth more divided than we are together. Thanks. 
If it makes sense, then it doesn't make dollars. And that's how America works. Again, I think we don't understand what's really going on in this country. We still think it's about color. It's never been about color. It's been, always been about economics. The problem is that it's easy to hide what's actually going on through racism. You use racism to hide the true agenda. The true agenda is it's about money. It's always been about money. You have a few white people in this country that still make it personal because they're ignorant. How do we divorce the two? So, so we're saying it's always been about money, but the people being exploited look like us. So how, how, do we, how do we divorce that there is not a racialized component to it globally? No, because it's all about money and it's education. This is why people starve and die to try to get to this country. They're not worried about racism when they get here. They're worried about making money, right? This is why people from Africa, Jamaica, Cuba, South America, we are all immigrants, me and you included. Our families came here. They weren't worried about racism. They're concerned about economics, right? That's the thing. I can't care less about racism. I can't control how you feel and how you think. But that's not racism to me. Well, I, I get what you're saying. The, 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 the elites are the problem, right? What is actually going on in this country? Corporate interests, politics. You guys, it has nothing to do with skin color. The whole thing is if we can keep these people divided, we win because we hold up the country. We're at the bottom. But that, and that, that's my question. Like, how do you divorce? It is corporate interest. Mm -hmm. When since time and memoriam, that corporate interest has always exploited people who look like this. Like, right. how do you divorce those two concepts? You have to say you have to separate yourself from it. Why is it so hard for us to separate ourselves from it? Because, because we're still being victimized. Well, true. But the desire, and the love for money. Right. We have to have our own. We own nothing in this country. We have no wealth. Right. We own one percent of this nation's wealth. Yet we spend last year, we spent over one point six trillion dollars. So the issue is, what do black people own? What do we have? We have no power. We don't act collectively as a group. Individually, we're doing really well, right? It's not like our community. It's not like all black people are just doing bad and we're out here struggling. But see, that, and that's my question, because I agree with you. Right. If we owned more things as a collective, we would do better as a collective. Correct. But every time we have, because we've done it. We have done it. It has been systemically dismantled. So how do we divorce ourselves so, from those two realities? So when we say systemically dismantled, what it is is there is a there is a there is a force. These people you'll never see them. They're not the white people that we come in contact with every other day, right? They're people that you don't know, you'll never know, we'll never see them, right? These are the elites. These people run the country, right? Global elites. They run everything, right? What's the reality? The reality is the real battle is about money, it's about the mind, because if you control the mind, you control the body. They, right now, they control the actions of black people. Easily, 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 they're manipulating us to hate one another, to hate different races in this country, right? To, to combat with one another. So the issue is, how do we fix that? We have to have our own, right? We have to have our, again, we complain about systemic racism. We complain about white people. We complain about, you know, um, the healthcare. We complain about, the financial situation, we complain about housing, we complain about these things, and rightfully so, they're issues. But again, the people we're asking to fix them are the same people we're complaining about. So it doesn't make sense, it's a contradiction. So again, I asked, what's the solution? We can ask the people that we, have a, that we claim we have a problem with and say that they're racist, because the idea in our community is that white people are racist, they don't want the best for us, yet, we're asking them to fix our problems. We're asking them to educate our kids. You said it before. Why would, why would they want to make us better? Because by making us better, we then, we then kind of rise up and we take back a portion of this wealth. That's not the goal. The goal was never to educate the people at the bottom. Right. Because then, again, I tell people all the time, power, power is very unique. It can't be created or destroyed, right? There's only... Don't be taken. Yeah, it, that's it. It's 100% power that exists right now. People have what they have. We own 1% of the power, which is the wealth. Wealth is power. How do you get power? It's either loaned to you, 
or it's given to you or you take it. That's it. What are we asking for people right now? And as, as a black community, we're asking people to give us power. Mm. We say, hey, can you, can you, can you, can you share I should agree with that point. Right? I can you, can you point. give us, can you give us power? Right? People talk about the NFL and they say, oh, well, we're the black owners. Right? What are you going to do? They're gonna, you think they're going to give a percentage of their team away to, to a wealthy black person and say, oh, let me share, let me share this wealth in this position. Hey, matter of fact, because there's not enough black people who own NFL teams, Five of us decide we're going to give up our teams and give it to some black people. It doesn't work like that. They're in a position of power and they say, you're going to have to fight for it or you're going to have to take it. I'm not giving away my position. I don't care about what happened to you guys 400 years ago. It doesn't matter to me, right? What, what does that have to do with me? This is the mindset of people who already have power. They do not care, right? And I think that because we're such a passionate group of people, you know, in a sense, we're very loving. And so we're looking at it like, hey, you guys, can, why can't you just be fair? We're asking people to be fair. Hey, just be nice. You know, we work hard. We're here together. Let's, you know, look what we did. You know, look at our history. And the people who have power say, I don't, I don't care.